In this activity, we're going to study physical simple harmonic oscillators. We'll document their motion by taking snapshots at regular time intervals. Then we'll plot their motions as a two-dimensional waveform. Okay, so I've got a 1,000 gram mass hanging from a spring. I lined it up so the bottom of the mass is about even with the 70 centimeters above ground mark. So my goal here is going to be to take regular snapshots. I have here a digital timer and what I can do is click start and I'm going to let the timer count up and as it counts every time it hits a new second I'm going to snap a picture of the setup with my phone and that way I'll get snapshots at one second intervals. I'm gonna call out click every time the timer gets to a new second. Okay so first let's put the object into motion with an amplitude of about 10 centimeters. Here we go. Now I'm going to start the timer. Click, 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 click. Okay, so I feel like that might not have been enough snapshots. It might not have been a fast enough rate of snapshot in order to really see the motion well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to click every half a second this time. Let's see if we can give it now a larger amplitude. So we're going to achieve a larger amplitude by instead of just pulling it down 10 centimeters, I'm going to pull it down 20 centimeters this time. Its displacement is 20 centimeters Let's let it go. Click, 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 click. Okay, so that data set looks pretty good. The comparison I want to do is between a mass with a low frequency versus a mass with a high frequency. So we can use this mass as the trial with the low frequency. What I'll do next is find a mass that's a little bit smaller and that's going to change our period and frequency. The hanging mass I'm using now is a 1,000 gram mass. I'm going to replace it now with a 500 gram, which is half as heavy. Okay, so I replaced the 1,000 gram mass with a 500 gram mass. I positioned it so that it's in the same spot that the other one was in. I'm going to now pull the 500 gram mass down and we can do a trial with a 20 centimeter displacement. I'm going to take a picture of the floor so that when I look back at my phone I'll know where the last trial ended and now we can start a new trial. Okay so let's pull the mass down now by 20 centimeters and we'll put it into motion from there. Okay, I'm going to start my timer and click every one half of a second. Click, 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 click. That seemed like a good trial. Okay, so I used Apple's AirDrop to move the photos from my phone to the computer. So I realized that it could be difficult 
for me to tell where one trial ends and another begins. So I came up with the idea of taking a picture of the floor after a trial in order to break it up. Okay, so it looks like from 96.10 to 96.30 is one trial because after that photo, I took a photo of the ground to let myself know that the trial had ended. So what I'm going to do is I'll move all these photos to their own folder. Then it looks like uh, trial two starts at 96.34 and it goes till 96.53. Trial 3 begins at 96.56 and ends at 96.76. I'm going to open the first image and what I'm looking for is if I can just make a determination of where the mass is located. Now I'm using the bottom of the mass, so this looks like 51, 2, 3, 4. Now the angle that the camera is shooting at is certainly not going to be ideal, but it should be close enough to give us a good approximation of the motion of this mass. So I'm going to go with 54, uh, between 54 and 55. I'll just go with uh, what I believe it to be. I believe it's probably 55. Okay, let's open the next image. Looks like we're at 56 at this point. Now remember, in these trials, I had taken snapshots every 0 0.5 seconds. And at that time, we were located at 56 centimeters. For the next snapshot, it looks like we're at 82. I can add uncertainties to these later. 85. Looks like 55, 53, this looks like 79. Okay, I'll stop there because my data table is ended. <laughs> what I want to do next is take this data and move it into Desmos so that we can see a scatter plot of what the position versus time for this graph looks like. And then we'd like to try some regression if possible. So I'll go to desmos.com. We're going to click plus in the upper left and add a table. And now we just want to enter the exact values that are shown in my table. If you hit enter here, Desmos will continue the pattern. If we hit the magnifying glass, it'll jump to our data. That's what I have so far. And okay, there is eight seconds of motion for this object. As we can see, it spends an awful lot of time at the top and the bottom of its path. 
and it doesn't spend a whole lot of time in the middle here because we never really caught it on camera at those times. That implies to us something about its motion that it must be that it's moving slow at the top and bottom and it must be moving quite fast when it moves through the middle. But now let's try to do some regression on it. Now, the type of curve that we expect for simple harmonic motion will be a periodic function. It could be a sine or a cosine graph. So I'm gonna try regression using sine. The way I'll do this is I'll type in y1 tilde and then we could just type in sine of x1 but this alone would not really work out that well for us and the reason why is if we just look at a sine curve like for example y equals sine x that's a graph that's centered on the horizontal axis it goes through the origin but with our numbers, we have what's called a vertical shift here. I didn't start my mass out at the zero of the scale, so I need to take that into account when I do the regression and add a plus k. This is going to move my graph up so that it can be, that the center of my function is going to be around 70. Okay, so that's a good start, but as we can see, the amplitude of my graph is not quite right yet. So we're going to introduce a vertical stretch of the function as well. And the way we do that is put a letter in front of the sign, which would be a multiplier that can multiply it by the amplitude that we need. I'm going to leave it just as a letter A. And so that didn't quite um, give me the result that I need yet and it probably won't until I change another thing. The regression is taking everything into account and it's not going to respond to the amplitude just yet until I get the other constants figured out as well. So I'm going to type in WX. W here is standing for the Greek letter Omega which is the angular frequency of the wave. Now it looks like the regression is starting to kick in to a pretty good degree. As we can see, the sine wave completes its cycle after 2 pi. That would be the original graph of sine of x. But our graph actually completes its cycle with a different period. We can estimate the period if we take one point on my wave and then see the difference between that and the next point on my wave. Just subtract them two and we can see what my period is. So 3.32 minus 1.42. My period of my wave is 1.89 so far. Uh, whereas 2 pi would have been a period of 6.3. So the original sign is very different from mine. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce one more shift and that's going to be a horizontal shift. Uh, you know, sign is at the equilibrium point at the start of the clock. However, as I recall, I actually didn't start my wave at the equilibrium point. I couldn't because I had to give energy to it. I pulled it down to its minimum, so I actually started at the lowest point. So we need this point actually to move over to the left. That's a horizontal shift. The way we achieve a horizontal shift is by subtracting a constant directly to the horizontal variable in question. Typically that's done with a subtraction of h, where h stands for the horizontal shift of the function. And now as we can see, the regression has really taken hold here. Uh, it's quite striking how close 
these points are to a true sine wave. We have a R squared value, which tells us about how good the model fits the data. And if it was one, that would be a perfect fit. And it's pretty close to one. It's 0.979. Very good fit. Now, I said when I pulled the mass down that I was going to pull it down by 20 centimeters. And if you look at the value of A, A here stands for the amplitude of the wave. And as you can see, it is almost perfectly 20 centimeters. I also said that the equilibrium point of my sine wave was going to be 70 centimeters. If you look at the vertical shift, K, we can see that the statistical regression puts K, the vertical shift, at about 69.5 centimeters, which is almost perfectly where I had it at its equilibrium point. I had it at a Y of 70. So this is going to be my equilibrium level here. If we look at the omega here, that's the angular frequency. It's around 3.2, the units that are radians per second. And we can calculate the frequency and the period from the omega if we want. But let's just go off the graph and see what the period is according to the graph. Okay, so I've got my graph of my motion here. This was the 1,000 gram mass. So the way we measure the amplitude of the function is we want to see what is the difference between the peak and the equilibrium point. All right, so if we just get this distance here, that distance is known as the amplitude, A. You could also think of it as 1 half of the difference between the peak and the trough. So this would be 2a then. All right, so my amplitude is about 20. Now let's see if we can find the period from the graph. So the horizontal axis of this type of graph is going to be time in seconds. And the vertical label here should be position. And I'll call it Y. So in order to find the period, we should find two points in our wave where we're in one phase and then we come back to that same exact phase. The phase tells us how much of a cycle has been completed. So if we just trace our curve here, the blue represents one complete cycle. for the sine wave. We start off here at a phase that's called zero degrees. Then we go to the peak, which has a phase of 90 degrees. We'll get to the halfway point at 180 degrees. When we get to that trough, we're at 270 degrees. And then when we come back to the same point in the waveform that we were at when we started, that could be 360 degrees or zero degrees again. So this point and this point are places where we're just starting a cycle and we're in the same phase, it's called. 
So what we really need is we need the time difference between those points. Okay, so what we can do is we can trace this down to the time axis. And this is going to be the start of a cycle. And then we'll trace this down as well. And that's going to be the end of a cycle. OK, so what we're going to need is we're going to need this distance here. OK, so uh, I say that we started here at, you know, here's 1 according to the scale here. So we're a little bit past 0.5, but we're not quite to 1. I'd say we're at 0 0.8 seconds. And then here the end of the cycle occurs at not quite 3, but it's a little past 2.5. That might be 2.8 seconds. So this is the initial time and the final time. And I'll just subtract them to get what is known as the period of the wave. Okay, so T is going to be T final minus T initial. That's 2.8 seconds minus 0.8 seconds. So the period looks like it's about 2 seconds for this trial. Now let's see how close I am to what the regression model would say about that. So according to the regression model, we have this information. Okay, so here we see that the amplitude is 20.0. The angular frequency is 3.2. The horizontal shift is 0.8, and the vertical shift is about 70. I can determine what the period is from the angular frequency alone. I'll use the formula T equals 2 pi over omega. So T stands for the period, and omega stands for the angular frequency. All right, so let's plug in. It's 1.96. So it takes 1.96 seconds for a complete oscillation to occur, according to this approach. And if we look at what I had found from the graph, that just about agrees. It's a two second period. We also would like to know the frequency of this wave. And that has the formula 1 over t and it could also be found by doing omega over 2 pi. Two different ways to find it. So I say that the frequency is 1 over 1.96 seconds. And so therefore the frequency of this mass is 0.51 hertz. Okay, so that's great. We can label that up here just so that we uh, are clear about what this graph represents. 
a period of two seconds and a frequency of 0.51 Hertz and that's all the information that we need for now let's look at another trial though and see how the wave of that trial compares to this wave okay so now we need a mass on a spring with a higher frequency okay so as we can see here this is the 500 gram mass I can tell because it's smaller than the other one and it also obviously had the 20 centimeter amplitude because I can see that it went way below 60 here so let's get the data for this one and see how it compares so our first position looks like 53 perhaps 69 and 85 okay let's go back to Desmos uh, what I'll do is I'll just go to a new uh, column here and we'll make a Y2. Okay, so let's see, 53, 69, 88. Okay, there's my data. Doesn't look like much right now, but let's try the regression on it I'll use Y2 this time because that is my second column name here and we'll hit tilde so capital A sign of big W times X1 we still use the same X1 as before then minus H plus K. There we go. And I'll just hide the data for a moment because it's so tough to tell what's happening. If we hide the data points, maybe we can see a little more clearly what's happening. All right, so it's a pretty busy graph. We could highlight one of them at a time. And what do you notice about the waveform for the new function versus the old? Well, one thing I notice is that they both have about the same amplitude. 20.2 uh, amplitude for the second trial and a 20.0 amplitude for the first one. That's just based on how many centimeters I had pulled them down before releasing. But if you look at the number of cycles that are occurring per time, it looks like the blue is narrower. And we're going to try and calculate, is the period shorter? How do you think the period compares of the new wave versus the old? Is the period larger or smaller? Is the frequency of the new wave higher or smaller? So let's calculate it now. So let's calculate all those things now. Okay, so when we look at our new wave here, it does look like it's narrower. And so if we go ahead and draw that line, the center line at 70, first let's compare the amplitude. The highest point is again at 90, and the lowest point is around 
50. The amplitude is going to be the height of the wave from the center line there. That's our amplitude. And yeah, it's uh, very similar to the other wave. We'd also like to find the period of the wave. So I'm going to find a point where the sine is just starting its cycle and then a point where it comes back to that same phase. I'll trace these down and we'll see if we can estimate from the time axis what the period is. Okay, so it looks like the start of our cycle occurs at around 0 0.6 perhaps. And the end of the cycle looks like it might be just slightly to the left of 2, but let's just call it 2. So the period is going to be t equals 2 minus 0.6 which is 1.4 seconds. We could also find the period from the omega angular frequency using the formula t equals 2 pi over omega. This time the angular frequency is bigger than it was before. And I get 1.39 seconds for the period. We can now fill the values in here. The amplitude of the first wave was 20.0 centimeters. The amplitude of the second wave is 20.2. The angular speed or angular frequency, the omega for the first wave was 3.20. and the omega for the second trial was 4.52. Period of the first wave was 1.96 seconds. Whereas the period of my second trial was 1.39 seconds. Notice that cutting the mass in half did not exactly cut the period in half. It's a little bit more complicated of a relationship that period has to mass. Uh, the formula is t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. One over t we need to find the frequency of our second trial. So the amplitude was 20. The period was 1.39. And the frequency is found by 1 over the period. It's 0 0.72 hertz. Whereas in the previous trial we had a frequency of 0.5, we now have a frequency of 0.7. So the frequency is higher due to the system having less mass.